What's up, guys? What's going on? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional, and we're continuing on our study in John. Glad you're here. Glad you're listening, man. And uh, yeah, we've been going through John to see the heart of Jesus. And so as we continue, we are moving on to another um, story. Well, a transitioning piece right now, and then we'll be into the second miracle. So I wanted to stop on this transitioning piece because I think it talks about our heart a little bit. So if you've read John 4, uh, verse 43 through 45, check out John 4, 43 through 45. Stop the tape. See what it has to say. Come back and we'll discuss four questions, man. But if you've already read it, we're going to go ahead and jump in. So what is this talking about? Well, it says after the two days, the two days that he was with um, the Samaritans, it says he left there and he came to Galilee. Now, uh, in between that, it says that uh, Jesus himself testifies that a prophet is not honored in his own home. So this is the reason I want to discuss it because it's a little bit it's a little confusing why it says that he's not honored in his own home. And then supposedly it should be talking about his home, which is in Galatia. And um, then it says when he gets there that they welcomed him, that they actually uh, wanted him there because they had saw the signs that he did at the Passover. So it's like, what what is going on here? What's happening, man? And so I wanted to explain this because it's kind of confusing. And then we'll move on to the next uh, sign in the next episode. But what we start out here with is the fact that Jesus says this, this, this word. He says uh, a prophet's not welcome or is not honored in his own home. So what are we talking about here? Well, we know that this is a statement that has happened in the other gospels, home being Nazareth. And even in Mark, I think it says that he wasn't able to do miracles there because of the people uh, unbelief. So we know in that ramification, in that realm, what it means. But in this particular situation, how is John tying it to what he's trying to do in this narrative? And there are many ways that people have tried to understand this. One is that it's uh, his his country land, which is well, let me start first. First, the one is that his home is heaven. And so that uh, people aren't honoring his heavenly home. I'm not sure. I don't think that's it because we're talking about the realm of uh, the earthly realm right here. So that was just one of the popular ones. Another one is one that I thought was pretty good uh, understanding of it is that uh, don't over welcome your stay. Don't make a place your home as you try to evangelize. And eventually you might um, uh, wear out your welcome. Uh I think in the didact, which is a um, new, te- not a new Testament. I'm sorry. It's a um, um, early church uh, writing a letter. And it talks about not staying too long in a city as you begin to evangelize in that city, the truth of Jesus. So uh, that was one theory that the person said is that Jesus didn't stay too long in Samaria. That's why he was only there for two days so that he didn't make it a home. Because if it was a home, then he would have wore out his welcome because a prophet is not honored in his own home, if that makes sense. And I thought that was an interesting take on this idea. But I think what truly this means, though, I th- believe, you know, is that, that it's talking about his home country, his people, uh, as uh, it spoke about earlier in the, the prologue where it says that he came to his own and didn't receive him. And so I think that is truly what it means here is that as he goes back into Galatia, which is his people, his own home, Galilee, which he is considered Galilean, is that they don't receive him as he should be received with honor. And even though uh, it says that they saw him and they uh, welcomed him because they saw all the, um, the works that he did, their eyes are not on him. Their eyes are not on the person of Jesus, who he actually is. They're on the things that he is doing. I think that's what it means. The honor is not due him. The honor or the the fame that he's getting is his works. And once the works run out, they don't care about him anymore. And so I think that is the main focus because we see John often talk about in the scriptures 
uh, in his letter or not letter, I'm sorry, in his book, his his narrative is that the the uh, belief is the most important thing, not the signs, even though the signs are important. They show who Jesus is. They reveal the father in Jesus. But if the belief comes only because of the signs, then it's a it's a weak belief. And that's why we saw at the uh, end, I believe it's chapter two where it says that uh, they believed in him because of the miracles that they did, but he didn't entrust himself to them. It's because their faith was was not based on who he was. That that initial sign that was supposed to point to who the father is and, and who he is as the Messiah, the son, the sign um, and the wonder made them, them um, um, uh, believe in that he's a powerful person. But they didn't trust their lives to him. And so I think that's kind of what this is talking about, is that those these Galatians welcomed him in. They didn't uh, truly believe in the person of Jesus. They believed in his hands. And so what is this saying uh, about God? Well, that, that God is not honored amongst his people. I mean, he he came to his own and was not received. And the thing about that is that uh, he went to the Samaritans before that and they received him. He stayed with them. He remained with them. Remember, we talked about how remained is one of those words that John uses to show a true discipleship relationship that is happening. And so when Jesus remained with the Samaritans, that means that they came to know him truly. And so it's kind of sad that uh, his own people, like the people that he went to, weren't part of him and they became a part of his family. Yet the people who he wanted to truly be a part of, uh, the people that he came to originally to display this love so that all the world could see, didn't want no part in him. And that's, that's a sad fact. He's not honored amongst his people. But this fact goes beyond just the, the, the Jewish people, though. It does go to the world because the world doesn't accept it. The world doesn't honor God as God. And that's a sad fact as well. What's this say about man is that we should truly receive Jesus. It's, it's like, what is the motivation of our faith? Why do we believe? Now, I'm not saying, again, John places an importance on these signs because what these signs do is they show you who Jesus is. They point you to who the Father is, and that's vital. But when the signs and the wonders are gone, where are you? That is what it says about man, is that the man's identity in Christ should be found in the wonder of who Jesus is. The wonder of his Messiahship. Not that he continues to give things. And so our application today is this. Is, 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 are, are you, when you come into Jesus, what are you doing? If Jesus is standing there, arms wide open, are you looking to his heart? Or are you looking at his hands? That's the application. They sit down, take time, and think about if, 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 if all that was left. Uh, we sang a song in church the other day, and it says, if... Um, you never see the work of his hands. It says, but he would, you would still love him because you know his heart. Is, is, is that a truth for you? Contemplate that. If, if God did nothing else yet save you from this, this, this uh, 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 death that we have to incur, if, if he did nothing else but be who he is, would you still desire him? Would you still follow him? Would you still trust him? Think about that, guys. I appreciate you guys for listening, man, and I will see you in the next episode.